Hi everyone, my name is Julius Haryadi. I'm an internal medicine physician working here in the US. Today, I'm going to talk about Anki. Now, we all know that Anki is a very useful tool to study for USMLE. However, not everyone who uses Anki achieves the desirable results. So today, I'm going to share secrets how to create Anki cards that would give you a high score in USMLE. Essentially, there are three types of Anki cards that you want to create. And each of these cards should follow three rules. I call this my triple triad Anki card method. Let's unpack. So the first rule is to create Anki card with testable material only. You see, there is no point of creating a card that asks what is the prevalence of obesity in the US because this information is not testable material. Well, that example may be too obvious, but I bet when you encounter videos or reviewing question bank, there will be time when you really have to decide if this information is worth it to put into your Anki card, if this information is testable material. So let's use this granuloma question for an example. It mentioned here that margoline ulcers usually occurs more than 10 years after the initial insult. Now you really need to think, is this the information that you want to put in the Anki cards? Is this testable material? And now you can see that there are other information as well, like granuloma form days to weeks after insult, the microscopic findings of a granulation tissue that contains fibroblasts, inflammatory cells, and capillaries. You see, you have to decide if this is a testable material or not. The more accurate information you put into your Anki cards that only contains the testable material, the better your Anki deck is going to be. The second rule is to create Anki cards that contain information that you tend to forget. Now this rule is what made creating your own Anki cards powerful because it really makes it personalized to you. Look, the information that I tend to forget would be different than the information that you tend to forget. Therefore, we will not have the same deck even if we studying the same thing. Now, there's one point that I want to stress here. You should also create Anki cards not only for the information that you tend to forget, but the information that you have hard time to recall or something that you need to recall really fast. Do not get biased by thinking you'll remember the information later on just because you just review the materials because you need to be able to recall the information three to six months later after you first review it depending on when you're going to take the exam. Now, remember, the test is time. So you need to be able to recall information fast. The faster your recall is, the more efficient you'll be when you answer the questions, you save a lot of time, and it will lead you to a higher score. The great thing about Anki is if you really study Anki every day, the information that you review like months ago will just feel like you review it yesterday. Now we move on to the final rule. I'm going to touch something controversial here. Hi, we're getting back to the video in just a moment, but I would like to give you a gift for watching this video. I like to give you access for free on-demand video training of my USMLE test taking strategies that I have originally created myself after more than 3000 hours of tutoring USMLE. This video is packed with how to read questions effectively, elimination strategies, 50-50 strategies, and time management strategies. This is the method that I use to get 258 and 261 in step 1 and step 2 CK. It's all in here and it's free. I want you to watch it because it is the test taking strategies method that I believe in. So watch it, take notes, apply it so you can achieve the high USMLE score that you dream of of a free video training. Just go to juliusharyadi.com slash USMLE test taking strategies. Again, that's juliusharyadi.com slash USMLE test taking strategies. Now let's get back to the video. So some people believe that you should make a single straightforward card in Anki because that allows you to answer the questions easily. Now the downside is you may have a high amount of cards. There are also people who recommend multiple facts but the downside is you might get the question wrong over and over again lead to some frustrations. So I'm somewhere in between. So rule number three, create a single integrated facts. Let's use an example. So there is a condition called Les Nyhan syndrome where you have an enzyme deficiency called the HGPRT enzyme. If we're using a single fact rule, then your Anki card would be something like this. 
what is the enzyme that's deficient in Les Nyhan syndrome. Now, if we are using multiple facts, then the question would be something like this. What is the enzyme deficient in Les Nyhan and what are the clinical manifestations of Les Nyhan syndrome? So in addition to the enzyme name, you will need to answer the clinical manifestations. It would be like hyperuricemia, gout, joint pain, self-mutilation, memory problems. Now, if we are using single integrated fact, it would become like this. What is the enzyme deficient in Les Nyhan? And using the pathophysiology, what would be the expected clinical findings? Now, the answer would be similar to the above, but you'll need to explain it a little bit more. If you have deficient in HGPRT enzyme, the hyposanthin and guanine unable to be converted to their phosphate form. But if you want to be fancy, you can say nucleotide form gives you an understanding, right? And therefore, the accumulation of the hyposanthin will be converted to uric acid by the enzyme xanthin oxidase. And the accumulation of the uric acid would cause hyperuricemia, gout, joint pain. It will be very painful and you feel like you want to self-mutilate and not thinking right. So you see the difference? It's not a single fact because I need to mention multiple facts. But even if it's multiple facts, it's all connected. It's integrated facts makes total sense. Now, in order to be integrated, you always have to focus on why, how, and how to differentiate from one thing to another. So we got three of the rules done. Now we move on to the three types of Anki cards. When I made a video about how to use ChatGPT in USML exam, I mentioned that there are three factors that determine your score understanding concept, memorization, and application of knowledge. Now, if you follow my content, I guarantee you, you'll hear me saying this over and over again. So you might already guess, the three types of Anki cards would be the cards that address each of those. Understanding of concept, there will be cards for memorization, and there will be cards for application of knowledge. Now, when I give you an example of the Les Nyhan syndrome, there will be the type of card that would address actually both understanding and memorization at once. You see, a lot of people make mistake that they only create Anki cards for the purpose of memorization. Now, this will only focus on the leaves, so to speak, and not addressing the branch. Now, we all know that we're studying medicine, so there will be a lot of memorization. But USMLE is not only test about memorization, they will test about concept as well. So you need to have cards that help you recall the concept that you learn and able to verbalize those concepts. Now, about the application of knowledge. Again, I already mentioned this, that a common struggle for students is that you're able to tell a presentation of the disease, but unable to recognize it in clinical settings. So it will be very useful to create cards that contain short clinical vignette of the disease presentation and practice to recognize it. In fact, this is a very powerful technique to study for microbiology in USMLE Step 1. So I used to create short clinical vignettes using the facts that I got from first aid then ask myself questions about the bacteria or virus or fungi that cause the disease. Well, now making the clinical presentation is going to be much easier since we have ChatGPT. I used to spend hours to create and customize those questions. Now, this technique will not be only useful in microbiology, it's pretty much useful in any subject since uh, USMLE always focus on clinical vignette questions. So that is my triple triad Anki method. So in summary, you want to create cards for understanding concept, memorization, and application of knowledge. In those three types of cards, try to fit all three rules. Ideally, all three rules should apply. Thank you for watching and I'll see you again in the next video for more USMLE and residency matching tips.